have some wonderful, talented volunteers that decorate for um, for fall, and then they do um, like a Christmas one too. So. <laughs> Um, we actually have um, weddings in the garden, uh -huh. and um, a lot of people will come here to take pictures too in the back because it's so pretty. We have gardens out in the back here. Um, we said sometimes we have weddings or small events. Um, lots of people come to take pictures. It's free and open to the public, and especially in the summer when it's hot, it's a great place to just sit and have a little shade. So I'll show you while we're standing outside. You can see that there's two different sections to this house. There's the stone portion, which was built in 1792. And then um, on the end, the white log structure, that dates to the 1740s. Um, and so Johannes Mueller built the stone portion for his family's home. And he used the log portion for his workshop. And he was the town dyer of cloth. We'll learn about how he did that inside. Welcome to the Johannes and Anna Maria Mueller house. Um, they raised their family of four children here. They had two girls and two boys. When they built the house, um, like I said, they had gotten married in 1787, so they were a young couple with just the two girls when they moved in. Um, and this room would be considered the parlor or the sitting room. So when they weren't busy working, um, this is the room that they would either relax or host guests and visit with people. Um, the Moravians did not like idleness. Um, so their leisure activities mostly consisted of reading and writing. Um, they had a high value on education um, of girls as well as boys. So they were very literate, which means they left wonderful records, including diaries of what um, happened in the daily life. But their main thing they would have been reading um, is the Bible. This is a German Luther Bible um, because they all were speaking, reading, writing German um, up until it was a gradual transition to English throughout the 1800s. But even as late as the first decade of the 1900s, um, they would still have uh, church services in German sometimes. They would write letters. Um, so here we have a quill pen and parchment paper back to um, their friends and relatives in other communities like Nazareth and Bethlehem or even in Europe. Uh, for light, they would have been relying on candles. So you'll see a lot of candles in the room or a Betty lamp that they used um, fat to use to burn for a light. You won't see a whole lot of decorations on the walls. The two things I'll point out, um, this is a sampler made by Emma Grosh of Lidditz. And one of the things that girls had to learn in addition to math and reading and writing was sewing and needlework because it was gonna be their job someday to provide clothing and bedding for their family. So it was very important for a girl to know how to sew. And for that reason, um, they would display it, parents would display it and everybody would know, oh, this, this girl is educated and she knows how to sew. Um, the other item you'll see on the wall are certificates of either marriage or baptism. And so that would be one of the few things that they would display. A lot of the furniture in this room, uh, the chairs especially, were made in the brother's house. Um, the brothers would engage in different trades, such as carpentry. Um, this in particular is a musician's chair, and you can see it doesn't have any arms to get in the way of people playing instruments. And uh, music was a big part of Moravian education and life. And even today, 
um, you know, just on Easter Sunday was last Sunday, mm -hmm. they have the Moravian trombone choir, which is actually all brass instruments, but they call it a trombone choir. And they um, parade around town. Uh, they start while it's still dark early in the morning and play hymns to let everybody know that Jesus is risen and celebrate. So music is still a huge part of their um, tradition. This table was in the brother's house during the Revolutionary War, and it can be tilted up, and it has a shelf on the one side so you could separate um, the beds between men and have one man with light on one side and one not. Um, over here on top of the chest, this is a math book from the 1750s. Um, it's in pretty delicate condition, so we don't open it anymore, but it has everything starting with simple math the whole way up through trigonometry. Um, and the Moravians were extremely educated. Um, and so, you know, the school lived in hall right over there and they were educating boys and girls um, and very literate.